Hi everyone, this is Fahad Mirza and I welcome you to the channel. Recently, HP released an AI machine with 128GB unified RAM. NVIDIA also released Digits, another AI machine with 128GB of unified memory. So what is this unified memory and how does it work in context of traditional CPU RAM and GPU VRAM is what I am going to explain in this video in very very simple words. Unified memory is a memory management system that creates a shared pool of managed memory between the CPU and GPU. What it does is it simplifies GPU usage by providing a single memory space accessible by both CPU and GPU. In case of over subscription or if you have more model uh, weights which you need to onload to the GPU, the GPU automatically evicts memory pages to system memory or the traditional memory to make room for active in use virtual memory addresses and because it's a unified memory so that speeds up the things and you don't have to get that out of memory errors when you are using larger models. Now before I tell you the difference between these two in more detail in more simple words, let me also introduce you to the sponsors of the video. iGenPod lets you effortlessly deploy a personalized knowledge bot across platforms like Discord, Slack and others. It is ideal for open source tech communities and startups that provide user support and I will drop the link to their website in video's description. Also, if you want to learn more about digits and stuff, please just go to my channel and search with digits. I already have done a comprehensive video on this amazing NVIDIA's offering and if you should buy it or not, even the comments in this video are quite insightful. So thank you for all the commentators. So coming back to this unified memory, let me try to go into a bit more detail as what exactly is happening here. Consider a CPU. CPU is simply a chip with a powerful and very expressive instruction set because it is etched into the hardware itself. It has got a versatile and flexible performance characteristic. It also has a most dozen cores which can execute some instructions in parallel, but the detail could be complex. A GPU on the other side is a chip which with much, much weaker cores. When we say weaker cores, it means that it has a slower clock speed and less expressive instruction set. But it is huge. Now, what happens is that when you're running um, in the unified memory, in very simple words, CPU loads data into RAM, then data is copied from RAM over to VRAM, and then GPU processes it and then puts it back into VRAM and then from there data is copied into the RAM and then given to the user. So this is yes inefficient because the reason is that there are buses in between CPU, GPU and all this stuff which have lower bandwidth. So it is extremely important that this also gets optimized and by the way flash attention is one thing which tries to optimize this sort of thing at the software level because bus is very very lower orders of magnitude that even if one could technically really only use ram instead of vram it is not going to work so in other words you can have a fast ram and you can have a slow ram slow vram in practice it always comes down to bus width of the ram because normally in general cases uh, ram is 64 bit and VRAM is 512 bit. So RAM's throughput is quite um, slower than the VRAM and that is why we have to use VRAM for vector multiplication. For instance, normally, and I'm just talking about a rough figure, RAM is 50 GB, 100 GB per second roughly, whereas VRAM is 976 GB per second. So that is the, you know, 10 times the difference is there. Also, RAM is optimized for latency and that is why it is cheap, whereas the VRAM, which is also called as GDDR and RAM is called as DDR. So GDDR or VRAM is optimized for throughput. So remember this. RAM is optimized for latency, VRAM is optimized for throughput, but 
the latency in vram is not good so that is why it might take hundreds of clock cycle to start getting data from vram but once it is processed it comes fast really fast and that is why vram is used for model installation model running and for gaming also it uses hpm which is heavily optimized for throughput but very very expensive so the normal ram or the ddr is good for program execution where your instruction and data pointers need to jump around whereas this gddr or vram is good for math operations especially this matrix operation because we are loading megabytes worth of uh, tensor sequentially to apply some transformation and that is where hbm is used with these sort of uh, gddr or accelerators and unified simply here in this case means that it's all in the same memory space it's not really always a good for memory to be unified because the processing units might be competing for bandwidth and causing cache misses but on the plus side it means all the processing units don't need to move memory around to different memory spaces so that is where it makes a lot of uh, difference also uh, ram is tuned for speed the cpu needs data fast to avoid halting the system progress whereas vram is tuned for bandwidth so the gpu can get large volume of data to feed its thousand of cores vram uh, is used in all gpus and they have wide bus to get some massive bandwidth as i said usually 10 times than traditional ram and VRAM is connected directly to the GPU where the GPU has libraries and hardware to process the models and gaming fast. If the GPU needs data from RAM, the path from GPU to RAM is long and slow. So it takes relatively quite a lot of time to get data from it. And if you have ever uh, done this sort of thing, the CPU offload from a GPU, you might know, uh, know that uh, how much painful that is. Anyway, just wanted to give you a bit of a background around this. I know it's all theoretical and it's all quite dry. So if you would ask me uh, a TLDR, again, I would say that DDR or RAM is tuned for speed when uh, your CPU needs data fast to avoid halting for program execution. Whereas VRAM is tuned for bandwidth so that a GPU can get large volume of tensor data, which is primarily our models are that is the main difference let me know what you think if you like the content then um, please do me a favor and subscribe to the channel and by the way i have done various other conceptual videos on these simple concepts so if you're interested you just have to search the channel and if you like please also share this content among your network as that helps a lot thank you for all the support